All right, everyone, I am still a little bit gunked up, but I've got caffeine and ibuprofen in my blood, so, you know, I feel better than I could. And it looks like I got the milder variant of the flu or, or you know, just a bad cold that's going around uh, because it's not putting me flat on my back. So, no, I'm lucky for that. Uh, but we've got to talk about the Oscars. I didn't watch them. Uh, you know, I don't really know that many people who did. It's like, you know, yawn, boring, who gives a fuck? It's just Hollywood prepackaged nonsense. At this point, a lot of it's just propaganda. And then, you know, for the 10 millionth time, Jimmy Kimmel gets up there to pretend to still be funny. Um, like this priority creator, he's like, oh, I'm going to jerry rig it on YouTube, I'm sure. And, you know, I can tell jokes that anyone else would get demonetized for. I can make ad revenue off of it. Ha ha ha, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. And it's like, who cares? But uh, basically the reaction to it uh, the next day, even from the lame stream was, oh yeah, it was the lowest rated Oscars yet. Um, you know, it was down, I think 20% year over year, some crazy number. Um, and they tried to make the excuse, oh, you know, the apologists for Hollyweird, they said, well, yeah, it's because a lot of people are watching it on the internet instead of cable. If you looked on YouTube, one of the largest ways in which people stream material, the only Oscar-related stream that even trended was the Crowder stream. Apparently, this is what I heard, where Crowder was reacting to the Oscars and basically talking about how moronic and stupid the Oscars are, how the people there are talentless hacks, uh, and, and things like that, and cracking jokes. I'm not surprised. It's gotten to the point where a lot of times people would rather see other people react to the lamestream material that's made than actually watch the lamestream material. For instance, you'd have a movie. You know, some Hollywood hit, so-called. And then you have a bunch of videos that collectively, they're about that content, about whether people like it or not. They're rating it, they're talking about it, airing their grievances, joking about it, satirizing it, making derivations of it. And those collectively have a hundred times as much viewership as the original actual product. And it doesn't even compel anyone to really like the original product. What we've seen, especially in the wake of things like the Ghostbusters rehash, is that Hollywood has largely run out of ideas. It's run out of new ideas to the point at which now it's, it's reduced to making pointless sequels that run franchises that in some cases are okay themselves into the ground. It'd be like, oh, uh, you remember Evil Dead, that classic movie from the 80s that you know became a total cult hit? Let's remake it, only this time there will be less talent, it'll be less campy, uh, and, and ultimately it won't really be the same as the original Evil Dead. So they remake it now. A lot of people, the original is a cult classic. And, and the second one. And the third one. Those are cult classics. The new Evil Dead is not a cult classic. Okay, it makes, it makes money. But it doesn't have the same status. It's not even really part of the same franchise when you think about it. And that's something. That's one of my... Uh, favorite movies is the original Evil Dead. In fact, within the woods, uh, the original, like, the, the, what was it, a Betamax recording, some crazy shit, um, where it's not even Deadites, it's like Native American, you know, voodoo or something like that in the original. I think it was from 1978 or 79. Now, when you look at that, even that's better than a lot of the shit that comes out from Hollywood today. YouTube increasing also, you have independent contents like people make short documentaries, they make all sorts of weird independent material. Even the stuff that's not so well known, like I've seen several documentaries uh, on YouTube regarding folklore and sort of the paranormal in Vermont, and they're well made, and they're more interesting. The Glastonbury Triangle documentary on YouTube, I think it's like 40 minutes long total. Independent film, low budget, probably basically no budget, is better than some of the professional documentaries made on the subject. Man, we've got the same thing for like the Lake Champlain monster. We've got the same Bigfoot and everything else under the sun. The paranormal and horror side of things and documentaries in general really have been the forte of independent uh, content creation early on. We're now branching out into other things. Now people making cartoons. It's like, why do I want to pay attention to something lamestream? So the Oscar ratings were terrible. And no, it had nothing to do with what people watched on the internet. No, people were watching reactions to the Oscars. There was a filter involved. It's just like the same lamestream, like uh, legacy media, like the corporate media complex. It's like, oh, people shouldn't be getting unfiltered content from like Trump, like Twitter. They should be getting it through us only, and we should filter it and determine what they need to know. They then turn around, they, they clutch their pearls and go crazy if people are getting a filter on an independent individual just talking about like their Oscars or talking about CNN or something like that. They really, really get upset at those things because they know that it allows control to be exercised now, doesn't it? And it's more entertaining, generally speaking. 
uh, and so they lose on both ends. It's ac actually quite funny. Uh, I'm going to keep this short, though, because I'm still, again, I'm still a little bit gunked up. I'll do a quick update after this. That'll be all, basically, for the day. I'll just do some uh, extra editing. That's about all.